ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय निगम कल्प चोर गलित फल सुखमुखादमृत द्रव संयुत पिबत भागवत रसमल मुहोर हो रसिका भुवि भावुका रसिका नॉट जस्ट वन मेनी मीन्स रसिका इज सिंगुलर रसिका हाज प्लोर सो नॉट ओनली वन ओ एक्सपर्ट एंड सॉट फॉर मेन रेलिश श्रीमद भागवतम the mature fruit of the desire tree of vedic literatures it emanated from the lips of shri shukadeva goswami therefore this fruit has become even more tasteful even though its nectarian juice was already relishable for all including liberated souls purport in the two previous shlokas it has been definitely proved that the shrimad bhagavatam is the sublime literature which surpasses all other vedic scriptures due to its transcendental qualities it is transcendental to all mundane activities and mundane knowledge in this shloka it is stated that shrimad bhagavatam is not only a superior literature but is the ripened fruit of all vedic literatures in other words it is the cream of all vedic knowledge considering all this patient and submissive hearing is definitely essential with great respect and attention one should receive the message and lessons imparted by the shrimad bhagavatam the vedas are compared to the desire tree because they contain all things knowable by man they deal with mundane necessities as well as spiritual realization The Vedas contain regulated principles of knowledge covering social, political, religious, economic, military, medicinal, chemical, physical and metaphysical subject matter and all that may all that may be necessary to keep the body and soul together. And above and beyond all this are specific directions for spiritual realization. Regulated knowledge involves a gradual raising of the living entity to the spiritual platform and the highest spiritual realization is knowledge that the personality of godhead is the reservoir of all spiritual tastes or, or rasas every living entity beginning from brahma the first born living being within the material world down to the insignificant ant desires to relish some sort of taste derived from sense perception These sensual pleasures are technically called rasas. Such rasas are of different varieties. In the revealed scriptures the following 12 varieties of rasa are enumerated: Rudra, anga, anger; Adbhuta, wonder; Shingara, conjugal love; Hasya, comedy; Vira, chivalry; Daya, mercy; Dasya, servitorship; Sakya, fraternity. Bhayanaka hara bhibhatsa shop shanta neutrality vatsalya parenthood the sum total of all these rasas is called affection or love primarily such signs of love are manifested in adoration service friendship parental affection and conjugal love and when these five are absent love is present indirectly in anger wonder comedy chivalry fear shock and so on for example when a man is in love with a woman the rasa is called conjugal love but when such love affairs are disturbed there may be wonder anger shock or even horror sometimes love affairs between persons culminate in ghastly murder scenes such rasas are displayed between man and man and between animal and animal 
There is no possibility of an exchange or rasa between a man and an animal or between a man and any other species of living beings within the material world. The rasas are exchanged between members of the same species, but as far as the spiritual souls are concerned, they are one qualitatively with the Supreme Lord. Therefore, the rasas were originally exchanged between the spiritual living being and the spiritual whole, the Supreme Personality of Godhead. The spiritual exchange or rasa is fully exhibited in spiritual existence between living beings and the Supreme Lord. The Supreme Personality of Godhead is therefore described in the Shruti Mantras, Vedic hymns, as the fountain head of all rasas. When one associates with the Supreme Lord and exchanges one's constitutional rasa with the Lord, then the living being is actually happy. These Shruti Mantras indicate that every living being has its constitutional position, which is endowed with with a particular type of rasa to be exchanged with the Personality of Godhead. In the liberated condition only, this primary rasa is experienced in full. In the material existence, the rasa is experienced in the perverted form which is temporary, and thus the rasas of the material world are exhibited in the material form of rodra, anger, and so on. Therefore, one who attains full knowledge of these different rasas, which are the basic principles of activities, can understand the false representations of the original rasas which are reflected in the material world. The learned scholar seeks to relish the real rasa in the spiritual form. In the beginning he desires to become one with the Supreme, thus less intelligent transcendentalists cannot go beyond this conception of becoming one with the spirit whole without knowing of the different rasas. In this shloka, it is definitely stated that spiritual rasa, which is relished even in the liberated stage, can be experienced in the literature of the Srimad Bhagavatam due to its being the ripened fruit of all Vedic knowledge. By submissively hearing this transcendental literature, one can attain the full pleasure of his heart's desire. But one must be very careful to hear the message from the right source. Srimad Bhagavatam is exactly received received from the right source. It was brought by Narada Muni from the spiritual world and given to his disciple, Sri Vyasadeva. The latter in turn delivered the message to his son, Srila Shukadeva Goswami, and Srila Shukadeva Goswami delivered the message to Maharaja Parikshit just seven days before the king's death. Srila Shukadeva Goswami was a liberated soul from his very birth. He was liberated even in the womb of his mother and he did not undergo any sort or not undergo any sort of spiritual training after his birth. At birth no one is qualified, neither in the mundane nor in the spiritual sense, but Sri Sukadeva Goswami, due to his being a perfectly liberated soul, did not have to undergo an evolutionary process for spiritual realization. Yet despite his being a completely liberated person situated in the transcendental position above the three material modes, he was attracted to the transcendental rasa of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, who is adored by liberated souls who sing Vedic hymns. The Supreme Lord's pastimes are more attractive to liberated souls than to mundane people, He is of necessity not impersonal because it is only possible to carry on transcendental rasa with a person. In the Srimad Bhagavatam, the transcendental pastimes of the Lord are narrated and the narration is systematically depicted by Srila Shukadeva Goswami. Thus the subject matter is appealing to all classes of persons, including those who seek liberation and those who seek to become one with the Supreme Whole. In Sanskrit, The parrot is also known as shuka. When a ripened fruit is cut by the red beaks of such birds, its sweet flavor is enhanced. The Vedic fruit which is mature and ripe in knowledge is spoken through the lips of Srila Shukadeva Goswami, who is compared to the parrot not for his ability to recite the Bhagavatam exactly as he heard it from his learned father, but for his ability to present the work in a manner that would appeal to all classes of men. The subject matter is so presented through the lips of Srila Shukadeva Goswami that any sincere listener that hears submissively
can at once relish transcendental tastes which are distinct from the perverted tastes of the material world. The ripened fruit is not dropped all of a sudden from the highest planet of Krishna Loka. Rather, it has come down carefully through the chain of disciplic succession without change or disturbance. Foolish people who are not in the transcendental disciplic succession commit great blunders by trying to understand the highest transcendental rasa known as the rasa dance without following in the footsteps of Shukadeva Goswami who presents this fruit very carefully by stages of transcendental realization. One should be intelligent enough to know the position of Srimad Bhagavatam by considering personalities like Shukadeva Goswami who deals with the subject so carefully. This process of disciplic succession of the Bhagavata school suggests that in the future also Srimad Bhagavatam has to be understood from a person who is factually a representative of Srila Shukadeva Goswami. A professional man who makes a business out of reciting the Bhagavatam illegally is certainly not a representative of Shukadeva Goswami. Such a man's business is only to earn his livelihood. Therefore, one should refrain from hearing the lectures of such professional men. Such men usually go to the most confidential part of the literature without undergoing the gradual process of understanding this grave subject. They usually plunge into the subject matter of the rasa dance, which is misunderstood by the foolish class of men. Some of them take this to be immoral, while others try to cover it up by their own stupid interpretations. They have no desire to follow in the footsteps of Srila Shukadeva Goswami. One should conclude, therefore, that the serious student of the rasa, of, oh, sorry, of the rasa should receive the message of Bhagavatam in the chain of disciplic succession from Srila Shukadeva Goswami, who describes the Bhagavatam from its very beginning and not whimsically to satisfy the mandana who has very little knowledge in transcendental science. Srimad Bhagavatam is so carefully presented that a sincere and serious person can at once enjoy the ripened fruit of Vedic knowledge simply by drinking the nectarian juice through the mouth of Shukadev Goswami or his bona fide representative. This well-known third verse of the Srimad Bhagavatam constitutes the last of the introduction. First three verses, they introduce the Srimad Bhagavatam. In the first verse, introduce, after this also, we, we, it's also introduction continues, but by stating how the, uh, narrating how the Rishis at Naimesh Aranya came to hear Srimad Bhagavatam and how they stated the they also in a more elaborate way that they introduced the subject of pure devotional service centered on hearing about Krishna. And then we hear how Narada instructed Vyasadeva to compile this great work and gradually the subject unfolds from there. But these first three verses, they constitute the uh, traditional or the necessary introductory constituents of a uh, work of this uh, scope. Of course, there are not that many works of this scope. This uh, Srimad Bhagavatam is a very big book. 18,000 verses. So the uh, three constituents in a Mangala Charana are uh, the namas uh, vastu nirdesha namaskara and ashivadam 
that is to ascertain or describe what is the subject, to offer obeisances to the deity who is invoked. In this case, the deity invoked is the subject and is also the very book itself. The Srimad Bhagavatam is none different from Krishna. And the Ashivadam, blessing. So in these first three verses, we have immediately uh, offering obeisance to Vasudeva in the first verse and ascertaining who this Vasudeva is. He is the Satyam Param. He is the Supreme Reality. The purpose of Srimad Bhagavatam is described that who in this Srimad Bhagavatam all cheating religion is rejected and only the the actual religion the Vastava Vastu the, or the actual subject that is described Vedyam Vastavam Atra Vastu this is the actual subject of the Vedas. In other words, you may have heard the Vedas up to now, and now we're going to tell you what it's all about, because up to now we didn't tell you, or it wasn't very clear. Up to now it's been cheating religion. How is that? All the Vedas, Vedaishya Sarvera Hameva Vedya, all the Vedas are meant for knowing Krishna. And Vyasadeva states that up to now, if you heard all the Vedas, then you, it's just uh, dharma projita kaitava atra, cheating religion which is rejected here. Well, actually all the Vedas, they describe Krishna. So how is that, that it's cheating religion? Well, it depends also on the mentality of the receiver. Those who are near matsara, those who are without any envy of Krishna, they find Krishna in every syllable of the Vedas and in every atom in existence. And specifically, they find uh, every syllable of the Vedas leading toward Krishna. But they're also uh, composed in such a way that persons who are samatsara, who are, who are envious of Krishna and everyone else, they find something else. But in the Srimad Bhagavatam, it's very difficult unless one is very much samatsara, very much envious. It's very difficult to find anything but Krishna. Of course, the Mayavadis who are very envious, they do interpret the Bhagavatam in a manner different to those in the Parampara from Shukadeva Goswami. But those who are... Uh, Purified men who are thoroughly honest, as Srila Prabhupada translates the word sadhavaha, those who are sadhus, they will find Krishna. They won't find dharma, artha, karma and moksha, which when referring to cheating religion, this is what it's referring to, which appears to be the subject matter of the Vedas. But actually it's not. One has to come to Srimad Bhagavata. So what is the actual subject of the Vedas and specifically the subject of Srimad Bhagavata in which everything is made clear for purified men, those who are free from envy. The subject is Krishna and the Ashivadam is given, the blessing is given that sadyo hridi avarudhyate chakrati bi susushana takshanat if one hears submissively the message of Bhagavatam then very quickly or just at that moment the Supreme Lord will be established in one's heart and here in this verse we also have the uh, delineation of what is Bhagavatam 
what is a speciality of Bhagavatam and an Ashivadam that <clears throat> we can the specialty of Bhagavatam is that Krishna who is Rasovai Saha, he is Rasa. He is juicy and he is juice. He is the nectar. He can be relished. So that is the Ashivadam, to, to relish this rasa. Not just Ashivadam, but an order. Relish it. So this uh, Srimad Bhagavatam in particular, that is relished by those who are rasika, which Srila Prabhupada translates. Generally we think of rasika as someone who is... Uh, very much interested in discussing and hearing about very high levels of Krishna consciousness, which is not an incorrect understanding. But Srila Prabhupada here, and in the word-for-word translation, and maybe three times in the purport, uh, defines rasikaha, those who are full in the knowledge of mellows. So Srila Prabhupada he defines, or he repeats again in the purport that one should be in knowledge of these mellows. It's simply a, a sentimental feeling that I love Krishna. That is not uh, very much applauded by the followers of Srimad Bhagavatam. This rasa, which, as Srila Prabhupada mentions, it culminates in the, the description of the rasa dance. The two words sound similar. Rasa means, uh, Srila Prabhupada has here described it as taste. So the, the taste is, uh, culminates in the taste of appreciating the rasa dance. And rasa means a circular dance. It, it's not etymologically connected with, with the word rasa. Although rasa, or the rasa lila of Sri Krishna and the gopis is certainly very much connected with rasa, but not etymologically. So this is the uh, specialty of Srimad Bhagavatam. Or we can say one of the specialties. One of the specialties is that it, as described in the first verse of Bhagavatam, it very clearly delineates the position of the Supreme Truth as Vasudev Krishna. It's uh, this most difficult subject matter to understand. Bahunam Janmanamante. Jnana Vang Mang Prapadyate Vasudeva Sarvamiti Samahatma Sudurlabha is a very rare Mahatma who can appreciate that Vasudeva is all in all. Such a position may be attained after many births of seeking knowledge, trying to find out what is the what is ultimate reality. And ultimately one can come to this platform of understanding. Vasudeva as the Param Satya. I'm not going to launch into a discussion of the first verse here. Actually, I did so in several lectures and it's unlimited subject, but I'm trying to go through the third verse here. So, but it's all interrelated and interlinked. So the Krishna, his greatness as the Supreme Personality of Godhead is described in the first verse of Bhagavatam. And that we, or the, those persons who are interested in satya, those who are not interested in that, uh, that word amrisha is given in the first verse. So that, that's a synonym of satya, amrisha, falseness. 
those who are not interested in the falseness, either of trying to enjoy this material world or of merging the concept, conception of merging into some impersonality. Those who are interested in the essence. As Srila Prabhupada in this purport refers to the Bhagavatam as the cream of the Vedic literature. In this verse it is described as the ripened fruit of the desire tree of Vedic literature. So that's one analogy which is given here. And elsewhere in Bhagavatam we find Sar, Sarvavedeti ha saranam saram saram hi udahritam. This, another analogy is given that this Bhagavatam is the uh, extracted essence, the cream, the cream of the cream of all the Vedic literatures, the Itihasas, the Puranas, all of it. This is the, the, the real tasty part or the rasa. <laughs> Just like this, uh, here it is mentioned, drava is semi-solid, amrita drava, nectar which is semi-solid and soft and therefore easily swallowable. So it's like getting mango juice. So you don't, don't have to bother with the, uh, the pulp, uh, the, the pit, the, the uh, skin or the what's a seed I guess it's called yeah, it's, been, it's a big seed so uh, you don't have to bother just take the juice but it said galitam palam is the ripened fruit okay. now modern Indians are mostly uh, how to describe it well, Srila Prabhupada, I'll use his words. They're, they're the most foolish. <laughs> I was just thinking yesterday that you see people in... Compared to Delhi and Bombay, the Bangalore people are like new crows. <laughs> Prabhupada gave that analogy of when he went in America. He said, the Indians here, they're like new crows. Because the old crows, they're already used to all this sense gratification. When the Indians come to America, they become more enthusiastic. So it's, I think Bangalore is like that also. It's like Delhi and Bombay, they've been materialistic for generations. But Bangalore, it's newly materialistic. So they're more enthusiastic about being degraded. <laughs> Here, anyway, that's a diversion. That, uh, yeah, people buy fruit from the market and they buy... The mango, when it's not ripe, they don't sell it when it's fully ripe because it's soft and then it, it'll go bad and then uh, it gets squashed. So they say, you're supposed to take it and leave it for some time, but they take it and cut it immediately, whatever it is, banana or mango. And they, and they say, well, all the mangoes these days, they taste sour. It's because it's not ripe. You have to wait till it's ripe. And it should look, in many varieties, it should look wrinkled. And you know that? You must know. You're from an old... You're one of the old Indians, not one of the new... So it should be wrinkled up on the outside. And then it's just nice inside. So, fully ripened. Just perfect. Srimad Bhagavatam is just perfect for understanding that which is just perfect for us, just what we really need, the transcendental taste that we're looking for. We don't know. We're looking for it in sour fruit. We're looking for it in gross sense gratification, in pious sense gratification, in liberation, in merging, but everything is given just exactly in a manner that we can take it very nicely and relish it. This is the ripened fruit of the tree of the Vedas which you, we can get anything from the Vedas. Even in the 
In Indian culture, we find people who deliberately do everything opposite to the Vedas. They, uh, in the, the Vamachara, the, the tantrics, they do everything opposite and they get something from that too. So even the uh, gross reflection of the Vedic tree, that also gives you something. It gives you some power from some ghost, something like that. But everything is there. How to live in this world very nicely, uh, as nicely as one can in a material, in a place which is designed not to be nice. Uh, all kinds of knowledge. Uh, but the essence is right here. This is given and specifically given by Shukadeva Goswami. The Vyasadeva, he compiled it and Shukadeva Goswami, he uh, he's a Rasika Bhakta and some doubt is expressed whether Vyas is or not. Aham Ved me Shukho Veti Vyasa Veti Na Veti Va I know Lord Shiva says. Shukadeva Goswami, he knows. And Vyasadeva, maybe. Maybe he understands. That's another discussion. So this Srimad Bhagavatam, this specialty, is that it gives the definitive philosophical understanding, Tattva Nirupanam, of the Supreme Truth as the personality of Godhead, not the impersonal absolute, as is imagined by the impersonalists, that the absolute is impersonal. But the complete delineation of the supreme reality as the personality of Godhead, and how he interacts with everything and everyone, and that naturally in persons who are near Matsura, who are not envious of him, that generates, hearing about this, generates a sense of profound respect, that he is the Supreme Lord, who is to be meditated upon. He is the actual subject of the Vedic literature, which makes... Uh, jara age chuna tulya chari purushartha, which makes the subject matter of Krishna, makes the subjects of dharma, artha, kama, and moksha, which are considered so noble, it makes them seem comparable to grass, insignificant, unimportant. So the, uh, the greatness of Krishna is described in here. But, as this third verse describes, there is something more than simply uh, appreciating that he is supreme and we are servants and therefore it is our duty to bow down to him. If one comes to that platform, that's all. That's the perfection of life. That is the perfection of life. But there's more. Bahunam Janmanam Ante Gyanavam Mam Prapadyate Vasudeva Sarvamiti Samahatna Sudur Labaha. When one is actually in knowledge after many, many births, one comes to the platform of surrendering to Krishna. And we'll find if we just walk out of here, take a left and take another left, there is a Sri Vaishnava temple in which this uh Mame kam sharanam raja. This is taking shelter of Krishna or surrendering to Krishna. That is the charam shloka. That is the considered the the uh, supreme position. That's it. Surrender to Krishna, prapatti, as they prefer to refer to that. Is offering oneself, uh, the surrendering to Krishna. But the Srimad Bhagavatam, that offers more that this supreme truth who is described in the Vedas is Rasovaisaha. The Srimad Bhagavatam, the whole Srimad Bhagavatam is an elaboration on the 
Vedic term that the supreme is rasa. And this rasa, which the supreme lord, who is the supreme rasika, the supreme relisher of mellows, that is as much relishable by the jiva as it is by the Supreme Lord. Of course, he relishes in multi-relationships. But the, the jiva can be one with the Supreme Lord or even in one sense more than him, as we have heard from our acharyas, otherwise we wouldn't dare to say such a thing. And definitely over the road, if they're actually following their philosophy, they would be... Uh, they might take objection to this. Definitely the Madhvas would. That in one sense, the jiva can become more than the Supreme Lord, inasmuch as he can enjoy. Although it's a, it's a difficult term to use. We, we enjoy more than the Supreme Lord. How can you enjoy more than the Supreme Lord? He's the Supreme Enjoyer. He is the, in, uh, well, in technical terms, he's the vishaya or the subject matter of prema. Everyone who's near Matsara, they love him. But the ashraya or the place or the, where the prema is, that lodges in the hearts of the devotees. So actually they they have Krishna also he's not devoid of anything, but they they have love for Krishna. So this brings up many complex but very relishable considerations. But anyway the point here is that Srimad Bhagavatam it uh goes far ahead of all the other Vedic literatures in as much as it specifically delineates the supremacy of Krishna. Krishna is supreme, again, just up the road they may not agree, that among all the Narayana forms. They will say that Narayana, this form is the source of all. And we say Krishna is the source of all. And actually... We, they say we'll say that Narayana is the source of all uh, forms, Vishnu forms, Rama, Nrsimha, Varaha, Kurma, Krishna. They will include that, and we'll say no, Krishna. From him comes Narayana, and it's actually I don't consider it such an important discussion. We, there's no need to argue with this them about this because. If anyone has great faith in Narayana, Supreme, very good. He's, uh, most people have faith in uh, themselves as Supreme. <laughs> or some cricket player, or some film star, or politician, or whatever. Hmm? Or Satya Sai. Satya Sai, oh. <laughs> Yeah. Hare Krishna. <laughs> Sad to say. So those who have faith in Narayana Supreme were well, very good. We can also whisper in their ear, yes, but, but, but there's no need to fight with them. You see that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, when he was in Sri Rangam, he took this tactic of discussing in a friendly way with the Sri Vaishnavas on this issue. He didn't fight with them and they, they uh, departed as very good friends. So anyway, uh, actually they're both true. If if we in in uh, in one sense we can say in in terms of for the it, it depends on vision for those who are interested in the supremacy of the supreme Lord, which is what the supreme Lord means. And Narayan is supreme. At least he manifests that certainly more than Krishna. He's always. Supreme, whereas Krishna doesn't always show that he's supreme, although he always is. But those who are interested in rasa, they see Krishna as supreme because uh, 
his pastimes are, although we can't say those of Narayana are not, uh, there's anything lacking in them or anything not relishable in them. It's, as I say, it's very difficult to use the right words many times for discussing these subjects. But as the Rasa Acharya, Srila Rupa Goswami, Prabhupada has analyzed in his Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu. The, uh, the Rasa, Krishna, in this form, he is most competent to, uh, exchange Rasa. Or by remembering him, by serving him, by interacting with him, there is a greater degree of Rasa, which is not a very translatable word. Again, Srila Prabhupada herein uses the word as taste, the taste one gets from interacting or uh, from love. So the Srimad Bhagavatam, specifically, the subject matter is Krishna and by churning the nectar of Srimad Bhagavatam, the rasa of Krishna Bhakti, Krishna Bhakti rasa, that is generated. So Rupa Goswami, he is the rasa acharya, he is also, uh, he is relishing and distributing that rasa. So he says, Krishna Bhakti rasa, Bhavita Matihi, this term Krishna consciousness is the the uh, brief translation of this not very explicitly translatable term, the one's consciousness is uh, flooded with or imbued with Krishna Bhakti Ras. This is Krishna consciousness and Specifically in Srimad Bhagavatam, the, the, is presented by Rasika Shukadev Goswami, who he from the very beginning was not interested in cheating religion. He was the son of Vyasadeva, and he was in the womb of his mother, and he thought, "I'm not coming out. It's all Maya out there." And how how can you be with Vyasadeva and be in Maya? It should be that that uh, he should be very happy to be born and serve such a father. But he got out of the eventually came out of the womb and left pretty quickly. As he thought, this family life it's all Maya, and my father's also in Maya. <laughs> uh, but he was interested in Rasa. He although self-realized when he heard the verses of Bhagavatam being recited. Then he uh, something happened to him which he thought would never happen to him. He became interested. He was a person who had no interest in anything except relishing the... Uh, neutral taste, or not very tasteful sense of Aham Brahmasmi. He was Atma Rama. But then he heard something about some something about some witch and uh, how merciful that Krishna is and he thought, oh, oh, this is right. This, this is it. Oh, this is amazing. What's this? What's this all about? This must be transcendental because I know I can't be attracted to anything material. So he found what's all that about? Where can I find out? You have to go to Vyasa. To Vyasa. Okay, I'm going back. <laughs> so Vyasadev had more. So Sugadev Goswami, he was, of course. Again, we have to be very careful not to. When we hear descriptions like this, we might think that. There's some fault in Vyasadeva, and even Narad Muni describes, he tells Vyasadeva, you were, you were, you're Jugupsitam, you're just abominable, what you've done, you've 
compiled all the Vedic literature, and it's just terrible. It's t- what a bunch of rubbish, he said. Vyasadeva said, well, that's why I'm Vyasadeva. That's, that's, that's what I'm supposed to do. So, but we should be careful not to, in discussing these things, not to think that there's something wrong with Vyasa, but Shukadeva Goswami, he, to highlight what Vyasa has written here, that Srimad Bhagavatam is the topmost literature, he spoke it. And he made it even more relishable by his uh, various comments therein. Aho bhagyam, aho bhagyam, nanda. What is that? Nanda gopa vajokasam. Yanmitram paramanandam purnam brahma sanatanam. This is the kind of comment that Shukadeva Goswami says. Well, how fortunate are Nanda Maharaj and the residents of Vrindavan because that supreme, eternal, complete, perfect, absolute truth is living among them as just like their friend. Just as is in a relationship in which they don't even think of him as the supreme truth. That is their... How how fortunate are they, the residents of Vrindavan. So Shukadev Goswami has made the subject matter, which is anyway relishable, even more relishable. This subject matter of rasa, he's imbued it with more sweetness. Krishna is very sweet. All rasas are in him, but uh, Krishna likes sweets, and he is very sweet. So, Madhurja Bhagavatasa, this Chaitanya Mahaprabhu says, this, sweetness is the essence of godness. It's not in Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's estimation, ruling over millions of universes, creating, maintaining, and destroying millions of universes with just a, an anksha, just a little ekang shenas tito jagat. With just a little tiny part of my power, the whole universe is maintained. By the way, Arjuna, you're thinking that I'm very, very great, or that God is very great. Yeah, that's true. With just a little tiny fraction of my powers, I, I maintain all the universes. That's true. It's, uh, it's also true that, as we find in Bhagavatam, Rishimhadev is ripping Hiranyakashipu's intestines out of his body, which he thought was unrippable, but Nrsinghadev showed him wrong. So there are various past With Krishna also, we find him killing many demons. And as far as the demons are concerned, it's uh, not very sweet. But the essence of Krishna or the essence of godness in Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's understanding is sweetness. Therefore, this Srimad Bhagavatam, it's actually been discovered by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Although every all the Vaishnavas and even non-Vaishnavas, they will praise the Srimad Bhagavatam as the greatest literature. But Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he discovered Srimad Bhagavatam. He discovered what is there in Srimad Bhagavatam, which even many great Vaishnavas, they found the greatness of Krishna and they certainly found the, the taste of Krishna consciousness there. But the extent to which Chaitanya Mahaprabhu found that is uh, unprecedented. Anarpita, chirin chirat karunyavatirno kalau. Samapiyatam anatajvala rasa svabhakti shriyam. This Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he came to offer in this Kali Yuga, the worst age according to normal estimation, and the best age, 
according to transcendental estimation, because specifically this Kali Yuga, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has come. So he, uh, he opened the treasure chest of love of Krishna, which is Srimad Bhagavatam. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, his whole Leela is based on Srimad Bhagavatam. Krishna. But specifically Krishna has understood through Sugadev Goswami, through Srimad Bhagavatam. And all the Vedic literature, but Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's Leela of relishing Krishna, that is extracted from Srimad Bhagavatam. And he extracted that and he distributed that with all his associates. And specifically, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu instructed Rupa Goswami to uh, describe what is Bhakti Rasa, which he did in his Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu. And it's described as Srila Prabhupada, in, he titled his presentation of Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu as the nectar of devotion. And he subtitled it, The Complete Science of Bhakti Yoga. It's a very scientific presentation. Rasa, as Srila Prabhupada writes here, those are full in the knowledge of mellows. It's, it's a subject to be understood. It's, it's, it's not just a matter of, of, uh, whatever one feels. I feel something and it's bhakti. Of course, that's true for those of fully liberated souls, but there is also a science of rasa, which is to be properly understood. One, cannot uh, write transcendental literature. One cannot write about the pastimes of Krishna, nor properly understand them, unless one is trained in the science of rasa, which is delineated in Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu. So, those who are writers, those who want to write on the pastimes of Krishna, as the Rupa Goswami and others have done, they have uh, expanded the knowledge of Srimad Bhagavatam in their dramas, in their, in their various books like Lalita Madhav and, and uh, Gopala Champu, the different uh, descriptions of Krishna's pastimes, even which are not apparently in Srimad Bhagavatam, but they're extensions of Srimad Bhagavatam. So they knew how to present Krishna and Krishna consciousness in, in terms of uh, rasavicha, or exactly how this rasa should be relished, because otherwise, if one is not expert in this, then one may get things all mixed up in a way that is not pleasing to Krishna. There are various tastes. But if we mix them up in the wrong way, then it's not pleasing. Just like the taste of chili is pleasing if used in a certain way. If it's cooked in, for instance, a curry, when some chilies are added, then it, it adds some flavor. So that's very nice. And milk is also very nice. But adding chilies to milk is not nice. It's a, it, it's rasa bhas. It's a, the flavor is there, but it's not relishable. Rather, even though the ingredients, they may be good, but if they're not properly combined, it becomes distasteful. And this is not pleasing to Krishna, if we write, are not pleasing to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Bhakti Siddhanta Viruddha Arasa Bhas Shunile Prabhur Chite Nahoyulas. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu would take great pleasure in hearing about Krishna, but if he heard descriptions of Krishna in which there were improper philosophical conclusions, or Rasa Bhas, a wrong mixing, of mellows, then he was not pleased, did not become pleased. Therefore, Srub Damada, he would 
vet any works before they were brought to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu because he is exactly uh, Sarup Damada exactly knew the mind of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu anyway the point is that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu there are so many points but one point I'm making is that he introduced he gave this which had not been given for a very long time means uh, since the last day of Brahma when he last came he gave this knowledge of rasa and the ability to taste Krishna Bhakti Rasa. He gave that by the principal processes of hearing Srimad Bhagavatam from devotees and by chanting the names of Krishna. These two principal processes, which are always stressed. Shravana, Kirtana. Hearing, which means specifically hearing about Krishna, from the Bhakti Shastra, particularly Srimad Bhagavatam, and chanting, glorifying Krishna, specific, or not specifically, but uh, importantly, the names of Krishna. That should be there. And also, this is Kirtan, discussion of the topics of Krishna. The Chaitanya Mahaprabhu gave that, and he gave the possibility to everyone. Whoever wants to take it, but to take it they have to take up the sadhana of that sadhana by which we will become free from envy. And the sadhana is the same as the siddhi or the, or the sadhya, the, which is hearing and chanting about Krishna. So this hearing Srimad Bhagavatam is especially meant to give us a clear understanding of who is Krishna as the Supreme Personality of Godhead and to enable us to enter into that Bhakti Rasa and here Vyasade is pushing that go on, go on, relish it, don't just worship in a detached way or a distant way, go on relish this rasa and all the time don't think that that's for someone else it can be for you who he doesn't say that it's uh, limited to one or two people everyone can take it this is chaitanya mahaprabhu's contribution everyone can take this bhakti rasa it's meant for everyone so that's uh, an Ashivad, or the usually the Ashivad is what is this? Are you are you Shman Bhava? May you live a long time. May you, may you. Okay, all right. It's kind of neutral, but you must, you will. So, like, you should. So you should relish this rasa. Don't. It's not not that you can if you want. You should. He's giving an instruction. Relish it. Take it. So, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he's in that role. Krishna, he, he's enjoying rasa. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, even more so, and enjoying the rasa of serving Krishna and distributing that and saying to everyone, take it. And even those who don't want to take it, He's, he, Chaitanya Mahabharu is making transcendental tricks to make people take it. Just like the Mayavadis. They didn't, they, they, everyone took, but the, the Kashir Mayavadi, the Mayavadis of Varanasi, they didn't want to take it. But Chaitanya Mahabharu found out the ways of me. They should also take it. So this, uh, means that Srimad Bhagavatam is meant for preaching also to everyone. It may be not be that everyone is re ready to enter into the highest rasas. That shouldn't... 
Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is saying, take it, but how to take it? We have to take it through the system given by the Rasa Acharya, Rupa Goswami, which begins at the beginning, Ado Shadha, and then gradually, Tata Prema Pradur Bhave Bhavet Kramaha. Sadha Kaman, Sadha Kanam Ayang Premna. So gradually, Ado Shadha Tata Sadhu Sangha, the stages from Shadha to Prem. We have to begin somewhere. So we, we begin in preaching by trying to establish people's faith in Krishna and Krishna consciousness. But don't stop there. Go, go on, go up. Don't stop at Bhajana Kriya. Don't stop Bhajan either. Go on with bhajan, but that bhajan or the activities of hearing and chanting about Krishna and serving Krishna, we shouldn't get stuck in anartha nivritti or maybe anartha pravritti, <laughs> encouraging our anarthas. We should go beyond and be and attain taste and feeling and attachment. Krishna, and then enter into this. Everything's there in Srimad Bhagavatam. Krishna, he's not, he's there, he is Srimad Bhagavatam. So these four books Srila Prabhupada stressed as most important. Srimad Bhagavad Gita gives primary knowledge, introductory knowledge of Krishna. And then in great detail, how Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead is given in Srimad Bhagavatam. And not just how he's great, but how we can relate with him on a platform beyond greatness. That just like the residents of Vrindavan, they don't think of Krishna as great. Or even if they do, they uh, they don't think of his greatness as being very important. They Sometimes they see, they may have a vision of Vaikuntha, Krishna shows them, and then, okay, and don't steal any more butter. <laughs> so, uh, so Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, that is the scientific delineation of all the uh, of the rasa, based on Srimad Bhagavatam and Chaitanya Charitamrita. That gives the entrance into understanding Srimad Bhagavatam as Chaitanya Mahaprabhu relished it and distributed it and as his devotees relished it and distributed it. So Hare Krishna, I'll finish there. And if there's any question or comment, you can please make that now. Yeah, I thought I might have something to say. You were telling this story about Chaitanya Mahaprabhu relating with the Sri Vaishnavas. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu were relating with the Sri Vaishnavas. I just maybe you could compare that to his meeting with the Tattvavadi. How he met with the Tattvavadi is it was quite a uh, what's the word in, in a conflicting manner, practically. I want to think about that more. I prayed to Krishna that he gives me some more years. There are many subjects which require deep thinking about and it may gradually come I haven't thought that through yet I mean it's not just a matter of thinking or mental spec philosophical speculation we can say that Krishna may reveal something but the, the whole question of how uh, the Gorya Sampradaya is in the Madhva Sampradaya uh, it's a difficult I, I personally find it Somewhat difficult to understand. We have Bhaktivinoda Thakur saying that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu aligned himself with the Madhva Sampradaya because of the, specifically because of these two points of, of Madhva's total rejection of Advaita Vad and his accepting the deity as eternal, which um, anyway, it's uh, it seems to be a somewhat difficult subject which like I say there's, there's, it requires more thinking and praying for the mercy of the of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to understand these things 
we can give the answers which are given by our acharyas, but um, the, whatever's given, that the, the, the subject or the conclusions which are given by our acharyas, they're, they're perfect but and, and complete, but in another sense, there's always more to say about everything in Krishna consciousness. So, I feel this is a, more a subject of research, especially as I regularly or fairly regularly go to Udupi and uh, we have some nice relationships with some of the Swamis there. Uh, but as some of the what we might consider more fanatical members of the Madhva Sampradaya, they, they're determined to make a difference. That, that, that not that not that we should come together. Not, that they're always madva means they're always seeing the differences. So a real madva, they say, should see the difference between madvas and goriyas, and we are not madvas because we don't follow madva acharya, which is true in many respects. So, yeah, it's uh, it's a big question and one that requires more shravan and manan, more considering. But uh, certainly, uh, yeah, it is, it's, uh, maybe you have something to say, how Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, when he went to Udupi, he, uh, he, he, he was pretty dismissive of the whole sampradaya. He said, I don't, I only find one good thing in your whole sampradaya is that you're worshipping the deity as, as eternal. It's a pretty heavy thing to say. Whereas we know that, uh, well, the later Acharyas, they, they insisted that Gorya Sampradaya is part of the Madhva, Madhva Sampradaya. And Bhakti you know, Thakur who said that anyone who doesn't accept this, they're the worst enemies of the Goryas. So, it's something I want to... If Krishna gives me enough lifespan, there's so many things to do, and a lot of work to do in research. In uh, This is... Tattva, now there's, there's Rasa Vichar here and Tattva Vichar also. So, a lot, lot of work. And some of you young men, like I was saying yesterday, instead of giving your life to Hulid Packard or some other useless company... <laughs> You, you can do that intelligence which God has given you, you can come and use it in, directly in Krishna's service. There's so much work to do. I mean, preaching and research and all these, there's so much to establish Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's mission in this world. There's tremendous work to do, which uh, requires uh, many dedicated persons. So if anyone wants to take up research and development, Krishna conscious, <laughs> R&D, you can come. But first you have to get training. The first few years you wash the pots, go out on book distribution, and when you've washed maybe at least a thousand pots, then you can start to do all this. Yeah, it's not just by having a brain that's good enough for writing software that you can transfer your brain power to Srimad Bhagavatam. No. That requires purification also. Yeah, someone else had something to say. Here in the purport, Prabhupada mentions that uh, Sukhdev Goswami has presented the Bhagavatam in a way that is... Uh, Understandable to the people. Not Randis, yeah, he's, he's Prabhupada writes that Shukadev Goswami has he's called Shuka not for his being a like a parrot. We we usually see traditional pictures of Shukadev Goswami presented in a human form with, with a parrot's head. As Srila Prabhupada writes that he's not called a parrot because he parroted the teachings of Vyasadev. He repeated them verbatim but rather for his ability to present the matter in a manner that is as relishable by all classes of men. Is that exactly what Prabhupada said? Uh, 
His ability to present the work in a manner that would appeal to all classes of men. Yeah. Which is also gives us some inspiration that uh, although we should repeat the teachings of the Acharyas without changing them, but in another... Srila Prabhupada said we should present that according to our realization also. So... It's not that we just parrot-like repeat, but we should hear Shravan Manan. Hear and consider what is the subject matter. And then Krishna may give inspiration how to present that in various ways. And it's unlimited. So, what is the entrepreneurial The order in which Vyasadeva has presented Bhagavatam. The order in which he presented Bhagavatam. Has he changed it to suit the people? No. Not he's not that rascal them. Sugadev Goswami is not a rascal. He doesn't change it to according to their taste. But rather he presents it in a manner that they can understand that this is the taste for which they are actually always anxious. And Prabhupada did that even more expertly, we can say, or following in the tradition by presenting Krishna book, in which Srila Prabhupada wrote that, that people like to hear about novels and stories, but any people, people in general, but if they read this, then they'll be uh, attracted to Krishna. And Srila Prabhupada said that anyone who reads Krishna book will become a devotee of Krishna. So Srila Prabhupada presented it. Interesting, Srila Prabhupada didn't leave anything out. As some people, they, 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 some editions of Krishna book are presented through ISKCON channels in which things which they think that people might misunderstand, like Krishna stealing the clothes of the gopis, they're left out. And they just, but Prabhupada didn't do that. He presented everything, and but he presented it with uh, philosophical understanding, and in a very, so that people, unless they're deliberately, uh, extremely envious of Krishna, they won't misunderstand it. Hmm. He spoke even this verse that talks about him. This verse, yes. <laughs> Not, not only did he not change the order, he even spoke the introductory verses which are talk about him, himself. You mean... Shukadev. Every verse, every verse of the yeah. Bible, even the introductory verse was saying, yeah. Shukamokada, which is Yeah. He's not... Sometimes the great devotees, they... Uh, sometimes they, they say, just like Prabhupada... He would sometimes not hide his own greatness. Just like the, there was one conversation in which devotees were saying, well, well, people can't, they can't understand this transcendental subject because they're blind. Prabhupada said, well, bring them to me, I will give them an operation. <laughs> so we'll finish there for now and we'll go on muhuraho rasika bhuvi bhavu kaha always repeatedly relish this interestingly also just uh, I mean there's so many otherwise you can go on all day and all night on one word of, of Bhagavatam there's no end but bhavu kaha now we have the word rasikaha and bhavu kaha which appear to be synonyms. Here Srila Prabhupada translates Bhavuka as expert and thoughtful. So Bhavana, that, that has many meanings. One is a feeling or an experience, but it also means thinking. In Bengali also, thinking is Bhava, Ami Bhavetsi. I was thinking about something. So it, it means that one should apply one's intelligence to understand this. And it's not just that you hear it and just like they have these Bhagavad Saptas, people come and they listen and the, the, 
just listen and go away, but apply our mind to understand this. This way uh, we can enter more and more 